Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, всем. My name is Indra Dumna Swami. Меня зовут Индра Дюмна Swami. I'm your host this evening. Я сегодня провожу этот вечер. I'm here to help you evolve in your spiritual life and help you develop your love for Krishna. Для того, чтобы помочь вам в вашем духовном развитии и обретении любви к Кришне. So in that sense, I am your servant. В этом смысле я ваш слуга. We say in Bengali, "Dashushmi." Dashushmi means I am your servant. Bengali говорят, "Dashushmi," я ваш слуга. So um, this evening, we've decided. Well, I was trying to decide which subject matter to speak on. Сегодня вечером, размышляя на какую тему лучше всего, какую тему лучше всего обсудить. There are 700 verses in the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord's own words. His instructions to all of us how to <coughs> advance in Krishna consciousness, particularly in this age in which we live, Kali Yuga. And there's 18,000 verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. which is a postgraduate study of Krishna consciousness. The, the Bhagavad Gita is the ABCs and the Bhagavatam is the XYZs. <laughs> There's enough information in these two literatures, the Gita and the Bhagavatam, that we could study those two books for many lifetimes and not even complete the study. So I had a choice of, um, down, it's too loud. I had a choice of uh, 18,700 verses to speak from. So I chose one <laughs> from the Bhagavatam, which um, centers around the glorification of chanting Lord Krishna's holy names. <laughs> because my student, Uttam Shloka, he, um, well, he suggested, let's speak about the holy names. And that, of course, is our main activity, chanting Hare Krishna. Um, and it's our favorite activity. So the more we hear about that chanting, the more shraddha, the more faith we get in the process of singing uh, the names of, of God. So this um, particular shloka is from the first canto of the Bhagavatam, I think the eighth chapter. Must be what, text 36? Or, yeah, text 36. So I'll, I'll chant the Sanskrit. Srinvanti gayanti grinanti abhikshanasha smaranti nandanti tavahitam jana Taeva pasyanti acherena tavakam bhava pravaho paramam param bujam. Translation O Krishna, those who continuously hear, chant, and repeat your transcendental activities or take pleasure in others doing so certainly see your lotus feet, which alone can stop the repetition of birth and death. Purport, the Supreme Lord Krishna cannot be seen by our present conditional vision. Uh, 
In order to see him, one has to change his present vision by developing a different condition of life full of spontaneous love of Godhead. When Sri Krishna was personally present on the face of the globe, not everyone could see him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Materialists like Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, Kamsa, Jarasandha, and Shishupal were highly qualified personalities by acquisition of material assets, but they were unable to appreciate the presence of God. Therefore, even though the Lord may be present before our eyes, it is not possible to see him unless we have the necessary vision. This necessary qualification is developed by the process of devotional service only, beginning with hearing about the Lord from the right source. The Bhagavad Gita is one of the popular literatures which are generally heard, chanted, repeated, etc. by the people in general. But in spite of such hearing, sometimes it is experienced that the performer of such devotional service does not see the Lord eye to eye. The reason is that the first item, Shravana, is very important. Oma gyan timarandasya ginan gana shalakaya chaksuri militam jenatasmai si guravena maha Sri Chaitanya manobishtam shtapitam jenabutale shwayam rupakadamayam dadanti svapadanti kam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 O Krishna, those who continuously hear, chant, and repeat your transcendental activities or take pleasure in others doing so, certainly see your lotus feet, which alone can stop the repetition of birth and death. So in this very famous and often quoted verse, we hear some of the unlimited um, glories and benefits from um, hearing and chanting about God, about Krishna. As I was mentioning, there's no dearth of um, information about the name, the fame, the form, the pastimes, the paraphernalia of God in the Vedic scriptures of India. With all due respect, there's no other scripture or body of scriptures which come close to the information that we have in, in the Vedas. Of course, there's information about God in Western culture, but it's minimal. Our spiritual master gave an analogy. <coughs> like if you have a dictionary, you have an abridged dictionary, which is a shorter version with lesser words, and then you have an unabridged dictionary, which has many more words and information. So this is the same with reli religious scriptures. Nothing compares, especially to the Srimad Bhagavatam or 
even after the Bhagavatam, there's a post-postgraduate book called the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which even goes deeper into the subject matter of love of God. This is not to say that one religion is better than another because it has more information. That's not the point. <laughs> but a vast amount of information is available for those who seek it. Like the Bible tells us, seek and ye shall find. In fact, no scripture can cover the entire glories of God because his glories are unlimited. But different levels of knowledge are there because there's people who have different appetite for understanding the subject matter. Just like some students are satisfied that their studies finish at high school. Legally, you can stop your education when you're 17. Especially in my, my generation in America, during the hippie days, I would say 60 or... 65% of my high school graduation, they didn't go on to college. It wasn't cool. I remember after the graduation ceremony at my high school, we all threw our hats in the air, and then we got our surfboards and went to the beach. out on the beach surfing the waves and which college are you going to? I'm not going to college, man. I'm going to surf these waves to the day I die. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying. That's a sense. One time Prabhupada saw the surfers in, in uh, Stinson Beach, where I used to surf, and uh, he saw them and someone said, what do you think of that, Prabhupada? He said, oh, what is it called? And the devotee said, uh, surfing. Prabhupada said, no, it is suffering. <laughs> Why? Because one is very attached to that activity, which is basically the activities of the dolphins. So in one's next lifetime, you know, in this lifetime, one develops the mentality of the dolphin surfing the waves. So next lifetime, man proposes and God disposes. Then the surfers become dolphins and, you know, surfing the waves like that. Yam yam vapis maram bhavam tiyajatiyanta kalevaram. Whatever one, the deepest impression that one has at the moment of death, that determines what's next life. So 
So what determines your mentality at the moment of death? Your activities within this lifetime. So anyway, some of my friends went on to college. And they got a Bachelor of Arts. Ça va? It's French. Uh, they were very happy with that. Then a few of my friends, they went on to um, postgraduate work. Um, and my, one of my friends became a doctor six years um, studying medicine. And then he went on for specialization. He became a neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon, another, I think, four years or something. He started operating when he was 40. <laughs> then he gave that up and he became a researcher. He's researching the medical field. So, you know, you can go as high as you want. So spiritual knowledge is the same. There's different religions because people have different mentalities. Some are satisfied just to know that God exists. Some are very eager to under have more information about exactly what his personality is like. or even how to enter into a relationship with him. So for such people, there's the Vedic scriptures of India. Unlimited. As much as you want to know that information is there. And traditionally, these shlokas, we call them, from the Vedas, or particularly the Srimad Bhagavatam, which mainly deal with the personality of Godhead Krishna. These transcendental sound, vib sound vibrations are sung. They're not just spoken, they're sung. I made a mistake. I just read them. Shrin, Shrinvanti, Gayanti, Griyanti, Abhikshana, Shah. Actually, you're supposed to sing Sanskrit. Srinvanti Gayanti, Gvananti Abhikshana Shah, Smaranti Nandanti Tavahitam Jana, Taeva Pasyanti Achirena Tavakam Bhava. Like that. You're supposed to sing it. <laughs> In the spiritual world, people don't talk, they sing. They don't walk, they dance. And there's a festival every day. Detailed information of the spiritual world. All walking is dancing, all talking is singing, and there's a Hare Krishna festival every day. This is the spiritual world. My dear mother, what time is breakfast? My dear son, eight o'clock sharp. Breakfast, eight o'clock. <laughs> well, like this. So, the the effect of hearing, of of chanting that transcendental sound vibration and hearing that sound vibration is, cheto darpan marjanam, the heart becomes cleansed of all unwanted things. What, what are the unwanted things that are in the heart? Whatever is an obstacle to developing a love, or reawakening our love for Krishna, that's an obstacle. 
just like sometimes in track and field, they have an, what they call an obstacle course. <laughs> the gun goes off, and the people start running, and they have to jump over these, uh, what do they call them? <coughs> <coughs> Little gates. Or in, in, in uh, horse shows also, the horses have to jump over these obstacles to get to the... So there's a goal in life, which is nothing less than awakening our love for God, but it's not a straight course. There's many obstacles on that path, and the obstacles are characterized by lust, anger, and greed. There's no question of developing your love for God if you lust for the things of this world. The Bible says that um, you cannot love God and mammon, which means matter or material things, at the same time. It's the same instruction is given. You can't lust after the things of this world and hope to have ecstatic love for the Supreme Personality. You can't have a selfish interest and if you want to have a selfless love for God. <laughs> so how to cleanse the heart of those lusty desires? It's never easy. It's It's the... It's the, um, how would you say, it, it confronts every transcendentalist, how to overcome lust. You can't just swallow soap and think that your heart will become cleansed of lust, anger, and greed. When I was a young boy and I'd say some bad words, my mother would, she would challenge me, said, Brian, if you speak like that again, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Oh, no, no, mommy, I won't say it again. It's not that by washing a young boy's mouth out with soap that he's going to stop his bad language, but it was scary enough that I stopped. But the process of hearing and chanting the, the Lord's glories, particularly in the form, the simple form of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. That does work. Mahaprabhu says, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. The Lord himself says in his Shikshastra compares that these transcendental sound vibrations wash away all these dirty things from the heart. And anger, what is anger? Anger is the result of our frustrated attempts to enjoy sense gratification in this world. We all have material desires in our heart and we try our best to satisfy them, but because the satisfaction is only fleeting, it's only temporary, it's very frustrating and sometimes you become angry. And when you become angry, you do and say things that you wouldn't ordinarily do when you were in normal consciousness, and you regret it afterwards. People are so frustrated in their attempts to enjoy this world that 
they become so angry that they have to go to anger management courses to have to deal with their anger. My sister had this problem and she, you know, for many years, she's 60 now, and she had this problem. She just couldn't control her anger and she lost her job a hundred times. So last year she called me up, she said, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> She said, I'm going to kill myself. So I said, no. Maybe the ch children could go somewhere. So I said, no, try one more, one more thing. She said, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> I said, why not? You tried everything else. Did you try chanting? No, I didn't try chanting. So I said, repeat after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. She said, okay, I'll try it for one week. So one week later she called me up. She said, uh, brother, she said, I don't have a problem with, with anger anymore. I, How did it work? I said, because this chanting makes you, your heart very satisfied because it brings you very close to God. She said, but it's only words. It's just words. I'm, singing with, I'm saying these words with my tongue. It's, how do these words work? I said, no, they sound like ordinary words, but they're transcendental sound vibrations. So after 60 years, she said, can you tell me some more about the chanting? I said, I've been trying to tell you for 45 years. So I said, turn the volume up, put the phone on speakerphone and turn the volume up and close your eyes. So, okay, I turn it up. I'm sitting here at the kitchen table listening. So I said, Namachan Tamani Krishnas, Chaitanya Rasa, Vigraha. There's no difference between the name of God and God Himself. Out of His causeless mercy, the Lord is present in the sound of his name. And by chanting that name, you have his direct association. But if it's not kids, it's something else. <laughs> Some bells or a washing machine or <laughs> So... I said, and I gave the analogy that Prabhupada used to give. He said, you know, it's a, I said, it's a transcendental sound vibration. I said, if, you, if you're thirsty and you want to quench your water, if you chant water, 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 you're not going to quench your thirst because the water and the name water or the sound water, they're different.
Vada, 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 vada. You don't quench your thirst. Because in the material world, the object and the name for the object, they're different. But in the transcendental realm, in the spiritual world, in Vaikuntha, in Goloka, the object and the name of the object, they're identical. So if you say Krishna, Prabhupada said, he's dancing on the tip of your tongue. It, it's hard to conceive, but it's a fact. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare. You see his tongue, you'll see Krishna's dancing on his tongue. Ah, uh, there, I see. Krishna <laughs> dancing on the tip of your tongue. And Krishna is, amongst many things, the reservoir of all pleasure. And that's why it's so satisfying to chant, because in essence, we're all looking for pleasure. That's one thing that we can all agree on. <laughs> In this world, people disagree about so many things. Even family members are fighting, uh, friends are fighting, countries are fighting. One day there will be in interplanetary wars, intergalactic wars. There's just so much disagreement in Kali Yuga. But one thing we can all agree on, we are looking for happiness. So it's an open secret. It's a secret because most people don't know about it, but it's an open secret. You can satisfy all your heart's desires just by associating with Krishna, by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. So why isn't everyone chanting Hare Krishna? Manushanam sahasrisu kuschidyatati shidai. Krishna explains why. 5,000 years ago he explained why. Manushanam sahasrisu kuschidyatati shidai. Out of millions and millions of men and women, perhaps one is interested in the science of the absolute truth. And out of those few, yogis, jnanis, bhaktas, Krishna says, hardly one has understood me in truth. This is Dupura Yuga, before Kali Yuga even started. <laughs> How much more true that is now? If that's 5,000 some odd years ago, out of millions and millions, one, maybe, out of those few, hardly one, how much more tr truth there is in that, in that statement now as we're entering into the first phases of Kali Yuga? That's why in the, in the Bible, <laughs> it said, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. 
the call goes on for millenniums, the Lord in his various incarnations, his different representatives, different prophets, they're appearing on this earth, they're saying the same thing. But who's listening? Many are called, but few are chosen. This is the lamentable situation. And Prabhupada, he paraphrased it in a different way, a different quote than the Bible. He said, you try to encourage people to chant God's name. Not necessarily Hare Krishna. You can chant any bona fide name of God. It doesn't matter. It would be naive to think that God only has one name. My religion knows the name of God. It's the only name of God. No. You have three names. Veronica. What's your middle name? And your last name? So she has three names. Why should God only have one name? God has unlimited names which characterize his various transcendental pastimes, his, his attributes, um, his personality, so many names. And all of those names are full of transcendental potency. So if you chant them, then you have that direct association. And Santushti, you become satisfied. So that this chanting should be encouraged. It's all one actually needs is the chanting. Um, and you could say that for those who know this open secret, the value of chanting, they consider chanting Hare Krishna their most valuable possession. Just like these beads. Right? Every disciple has beads that are chanted on by their spiritual master. So you, you offer a disciple $10,000 for the beads that were chanted on by their guru, they won't sell their beads. I have a set of... Um, neck beads or chest beads that were given to me by one sadhu in Vrindavan. They're 450 years old. They were owned by one Babaji, which means one renounced saint, named Suryakund uh, Das Babaji Maharaj. Today there's so many Babas in Vrindavan, but this was a genuine Babaji. And he, he was so advanced that he'd already realized his eternal relationship with Krishna as a, a maidservant of Krishna, Gopi. It's a well-known uh, story in Vrindavan. So he used to live on the banks of Suryakun, which is a holy place in Vrindavan. And um, for whatever reason, he decided one day to visit Dwarka. <laughs> it's a bit philosophical, esoterical, but Dwarka has a different mood than Vrindavan. Uh, 
Dwarka is like the official kingdom of God, where everyone worships God as the master. In Vrindavan, everyone, they don't worship Krishna. They, Krishna's, the mood is more of spontaneous love. Although he's God, he allows himself to be approached as a friend, as a child, as a lover. It's more spontaneous. It's deeper. So he visited Dwarka, which is more formal. And in Dwarka, where they worship the Lord in a more formal way, they sometimes stamp their bodies with the different symbols of Vishnu. So while I was there, somebody stamped his body with these symbols of Vishnu, the conch, the wheel, the lotus flower, the disc. So when he got back to Vrindavan, he entered into his samadhi, his meditation, where he was meditating on entering into the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And Radharani saw the stamps on his body where he'd gone to Dwarka, and it seemed that he'd favored that other concept of life, and she rejected him. So he came out of his meditation, he was very disturbed. He'd been rejected by Srimati Radharani, who was Krishna's eternal consort, which was the goal of his life. So he said, what's the use of living? I'll give my body up in mystic fire. So he was wearing these beads that he'd got from his guru, who got them from his guru, who got them from his guru, who got them from his guru. He took them off and gave them to his leading disciple, and then poof, in front of everywhere, everyone, his body burned up in mystic fire, and there was just ashes there. So those beads were handed down generation after generation after generation. And then I went out to Radhakund one day and met my friend, and he decided to give me the beads. Mama, you can get them there in my cupboard. So they say that the yogis, they keep their tejas, their power in their hair. The Babajis keep their tejas in their beads, their ornamental beads. And the Vaishnavas, their, their potency is in chant, on their japa beads when they chant God's name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare So if you offered me one million dollars, I would not sell those beads. You can try. <laughs> Any money? <laughs> no. <laughs> because they're so valid. They were owned by a saintly person. <laughs> so 
So they're one of my most valuable possessions. Well, I'm going to show you these beads. You can all close your eyes now. Don't cheat. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. Now you can open your eyes. You see these beads. You see how shiny they are? They've been worn by many generations. So watch what happens when I put them on. <laughs> so my point was actually referring because we're we're not babajis, we're active preachers and we get our strength from our mala, our japa beads. <coughs> So we, I wouldn't sell these. Also, if you gave me a million dollars, I wouldn't sell. These. I love these beads. I've, I've chanted many sweet names of Krishna over many, many years on these beads. <coughs> but why do we consider them so valuable? Why, why is the holy name so, of God so valuable? You judge the value of something by what you get out of it. Like if you have a piece of nicely cut glass and you have a diamond. They look the same. But you consider one to be more valuable than the other. You consider the diamond more valuable because what you can get out of it has a great purchasing power. <laughs> right? you, you judge the value of something by what you can get from it. So what do you get from Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare? Well, first of all, Cheto darpana marginam, all the unwanted dirt of the heart, it goes away. And those things are the source of all our suffering. Lusty desires, anger, greed, you know, it's the source of all our problems. So just by chanting these 32 syllables, they go away. Who wouldn't chant? Sinful reactions fly to a distant place. Material desires are uprooted. You get moksha. And if you keep chanting and keep chanting and keep chanting, then that seed, the bhakti lata beads, the seed of love of God, which is already in your heart, just like when the spring comes, all the beautiful flowers are coming out now. They start to, to blossom. Love of God, like a seed in your heart, it begins to blossom. Isn't it nice, the springtime? We came from Moscow, it was snowing. We landed in Krasnodar, springtime, the flowers are coming up. It's so, oh, Krasnodar, my cop, oh, so nice. Moscow, niet. <laughs> Even Krishna says in Gita, of seasons, he's flower bearing spring. So you may be in the 
darkest winter in Siberia, but if you chant Hare Krishna, you can be in the springtime of your life because that bud, that love of God, be, can begin to, to blossom within your heart anywhere in the world. That's the power of this mantra. And when that love of God has matured, just like it takes time to love someone, you don't love someone the, the moment you meet them. It takes time to develop a relationship. But with, at, with your relationship with the Holy Name, if you chant every day for as many hours as you can possibly fit in, in minutes and seconds, as that relationship develops, your heart becomes more and more and more and more satisfied. You become disinterested in this world, and you're constantly thinking of Radha and Krishna, perfection of life. So if we use the criteria that something is considered valuable depending on what you get out of it, isn't this mantra the most valuable thing you possess? It is, because you get the most out of it. So I know sadhus, sadhus, before they chant in the morning, they chant prayers in glorification of the Holy Name for one or two hours out of respect before they start chanting. I know a sadhu who does Abhishek. You know Abhishek, where you bathe the deity? He does Abhishek to his beads for 45 minutes every day before he starts chanting on them. <laughs> you know, we just, you know, <sighs> push on him in two hours, okay. <laughs> what is our level of realization? We don't realize Namachintamani Krishna, whether Krishna is present in his name. And that same sadhu, he been speaking for se like four or five years on the same verse from the Bhagavatam which delineates the glories of the holy name. Just one verse. For years he's been speaking in the same verse and he never says the same thing twice about the glorification of the holy name. That shows that the glories of the name are unlimited. Kirtani Yad Sadhari, Mahaprabhu says in Shiksa, Kirtani Yad Sadhari, we should chant constantly. But it, it's an acquired taste, <laughs> like wine. Wine tastes horrible. The, you know, when little children, you know, there's a glass of wine left on the kitchen table. They drink it. Pff, they spit it out. Naturally, it's a bad taste. <laughs> but 
But there's connoisseurs when they take, ooh, la la, c'est bien ça. Mm. La la, c'est très bien, monsieur. Ça là, wow. Donnez un, tip, un petit plus aussi. Vous parlez français? Non. Like that, yeah. <laughs> but he got to that point because it's an acquired taste. They say, you know, whatever. That's. I'm not advocating drinking wine, but I'm saying it takes time to acquire the taste. So chanting, it takes time to get the taste. You have to purify the heart, and then the taste comes. Yeah. <coughs> Don't give up, keep trying. <coughs> give the chanting a chance. Like the Beatles, they had one song, Give Peace a Chance. Just give peace a chance. Do they know the Beatles? <laughs> okay, so so just just give this chanting time to purify your heart so that when all the poison is gone then the sweetness of the chanting will become manifest. And the process is to chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And you have to chant 32 syllables. You can't chant 28. It doesn't work if you chant 28 syllables. What's 28 syllables? Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Wait a minute. Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. One of my god brothers, Pusta Krishna, he was Prabhupada's secretary for many years. <clears throat> and he um, would chant with Prabhupada. Can you imagine chanting Japa with Prabhupada? So sometimes he would be sitting, he'd, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram. Prabhupada said, What are you chanting? <laughs> Hare Krishna, no, you're not. Chant the complete mantra, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Yes, sir. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> it's a science, and, and it, everything has to be done according to the detail. Because love of God is your ultimate goal of life, your chanting is the most important activity of the day. It's your little window to the spiritual world. It's your opening your heart to Krishna. And because it's an authorized process, he's listening. So when you're chanting, be conscious of the fact that Krishna is listening. <laughs> and one day when that chanting is imbued with love of God, you'll endear Krishna to you by your chanting. More could be said. <laughs> But even if you can just remember one or two sentences today, you can benefit so much. Uh, 
конечно, но даже если вы просто вспомните одно или два предложения из того, что мы э, говорили, вы получите безграничное благо. Okay, so thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Last name, do we? Um, we can take a few questions. And then we'll have more kirtan. So don't be shy. If you have the cards. You know, everything's in Prabhupada's books. And when I was looking for a verse glorifying the holy name, it wasn't difficult to find. <laughs> so I think in every chapter of the Bhagavatam, there's some glorification directly or indirectly <coughs> about chanting Hare Krishna or just Shravanam Kirtanam Vishishmaranam. You know, in general... The, the glories of hearing and chanting about the Lord. But, you know, even after a lecture like this, how much more do we have to hear? Why can't we just accept immediately and plunge into the chanting of the holy names? I remember my father always used to also used to chastise me. You can tell I was a bad boy. He would say, "Son, how many times do I have to tell you the same thing over and over and over?" <laughs> So one time should be sufficient if we're intelligent. There's three types of hearing, first class, second class, and third class. Someone says to some boys, stealing is bad. If you steal, you're going to get caught and you're going to go to jail. So one of the boys, the third class student, he hears that. And he goes out and he steals. And he gets caught. And he goes to jail. <laughs> and when he gets out of jail, he steals, he gets caught, he goes to jail. It's like, goes on and on. That's th that's third class hearing. Second class hearing, the second boy, he hears that, but then he goes, steals, he gets caught, he goes to jail. And then he stops stealing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That man said, don't steal, because if I steal, he says, I get clicks. Second, second class hearing. First class hearing, the, first, the next boy, he hears that, he says, I'm not going to steal, and therefore I'm not going to get caught, and I'm not going to go to jail. This one time. So there's three types of hearing. One never gets the message. Another person gets the message but has to learn the hard way. 
And the first class person, he, he accepts what's said and he saves himself so much trouble. So we should be first class hearers and we should hear, oh, by chanting the holy name, the heart is purified, love of God is awakened. Therefore, Atman Ivedanam, I'm going to fully surrender to this process. I don't have to hear it a hundred times. But we do have to hear again and again because we're conditioned souls. <laughs> but the sooner we understand and apply the message, the better we are. <laughs> Another question? Совместное воспевание, то есть санкитания, она самый возвышенный метод, поэтому можно даже, вот, если джапу не читать, даже она заменяет. И ссылается на то, что когда Господь Читания ну, пребывал, его близкие спутники, и только он на четках читали, а всем остальным давали только ну, воспевание совместно. Ну, лично обсуждаем. Так ли это? Так ли это? Uh, so sometimes she heard that uh, congregational chanting, kirtan, is superior to individual chanting, japa. And uh, in Lord Chaitanya's time, he was the only one who was chanting japa, and all his associates were chanting kirtan. Is it true or not? Any way you chant is good. Um, there's different techniques to keep us chanting as much as possible. Uh, Prabhupada actually writes that the most important instruction of the Guru in the Bhagavatam is, is to chant 16 rounds a day. But of course the Yuga Dharma is, is congregational chanting. Um, because when many people are chanting together very loudly, it's very easy to control the mind. It takes many years of japa to control your mind. But, but loud kirtan with many devotees, you know, you just, you don't think of anything else but the holy name. Another form of chanting is to tell others about chanting Hare Krishna. Sankirtan. So a, a wise chanter will uh, embrace all three processes. As far as what happened during Lord Chaitanya's time, It's a fact that Lord Chaitanya chanted Japa. So how do we know that? There's no photos, there's no videos. It's not mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> I don't even know if it's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But one of his close associates um, in Vrindavan, well, yeah, in Vrindavan, was Prabodhananda Saraswati, and he was a prolific writer. And he wrote several books, one of which was called Chaitanya Chandamrita. And there he very clearly states that Lord Chaitanya would chant systematically the holy name softly. Uh, on a knotted string around his waist. <coughs> as far as his associates, they also chanted Japa. 
Vrindavan? When I first went to Vrindavan in 1971, in Rupa Goswami Samadhi, we're hanging his original Japa beads. And also the G the Japa beads of Jiva Goswami are still existing. Um, they're in Nityananda Vat, Sringaravat, which is near Imalital. I actually have one of those, the Japa beads of Jiva Goswami. It was given to me by one Goswami. It's very old. It's like deteriorating. If you were to squeeze it, it would just... <sighs> so I chant on it very softly. On special... On special days, I'll chant 16 rounds on that one bead. So no one can tell me that the Goswamis didn't chant on Japa beads. But one time Prabhupada said, these beads, those beads. Uh, once one gets the blessing at the moment of initiation to chant Hare Krishna, he said, that's an eternal blessing. Is a special blessing from initiation. <laughs> that by to get love of God, you have to receive the Maha Mantra from your Guru through the Harinam Diksha, the initiation process. <laughs> so all of you should be seriously considering initiation. It shouldn't be something you put off for middle age or old age. One should try to qualify oneself to come to the point of being able to receive that mantra at, at, um, from a spiritual master. And there's many um, very nice gurus visiting Maikop. Uh, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, I think, comes here. And Russia's favorite, Chaitanya Chandra Charan. He has more disciples than Durvasa Muni. <laughs> and um, who else comes here? Prabhu Vishnu, well, I don't think he's initiating anymore. But, but there are many um, other gurus who are coming, or just counselors who can counsel you in your spiritual life. But it's important to sit down one day, take your vows, and receive the blessings of, the, of that from the guru to chant to achieve love of God. Okay, so we'll chant now, Hare Krishna. <laughs> We've heard a lot about it. And I think, did they already have prasadam or are they going to take prasadam? You had. Oh. I see. Okay. So we'll chant, then you can you can go home and chant. <laughs> and get up in the morning and chant. Shri Hari Nam Prabhu ki Hari Krishna Maha Mantra ki Shri Prabhupada ki Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki Gaur Premanandi
I guess I'm going to chant, right?